Well, it's good to see you this morning. All right, we're talking about carrying others today. Galatians 6.2 says this, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And I thought, what in the world does that word carry mean in Greek? And I looked it up, and I studied the background of it, and it literally means carry. <laughs> carry each other's burden. That's what it means. Uh, somehow it relates to foot. I have no idea what to do with that part. I guess it means walking with people. But let me ask you a question. What are these? Energizer jumper cables. I think the Energizer, they should have used the bunny ears when they do jumper cables. But anyway, so this is jumper cables. How many of you have ever needed a jump start? Look around. Look around. Okay, you've needed a jump start? Good, good. Woke you up on that one, right? Everybody's needed a jump start. And how many of you have ever helped somebody with a jump start? I'll never forget, I had a fairly new car and uh, I was at a church. I just started. Uh, on staff there, and the pastor after church, his car broke down, and I went and said, oh, you need a jump start? I got jumper cables. I pulled up, helped him jump start his car. I did the bar in the trunk, you know, where you, you put the bar in and you hook it up. Well, his car didn't have a bar. It just went up. So when we were done, he grabbed the top of my hood and shoved it onto that bar and dented my whole car hood. Now, let me tell you the tendency when something like that happens. I will never again, give someone a jump start. But here's what I want you to know about life. Everyone, everyone needs a jump start sometime. And so if you're one of these people that's like, well, I don't want to connect to people. I, I don't really need anybody. I, I don't really need to be around anybody. Well, that may be true right now in your life. But maybe they need you. Because everybody needs a jump start sometimes. Everybody needs somebody to carry them sometimes. And so we're going to look at three ways that you can carry other people. And here's the truth. If you're a Christian and these things are not part of your life, my question is, are you really a Christian? Because if these three things are not part of your life, I believe that there is, is something broken in your relationship with God. And it could just be that maybe you're not even a Christian. You, you haven't thought of these things. And maybe it's because you're not allowing God's power in your life. We're going to talk today about physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. So here we go. We're going to pick up with, by meeting physical needs. And this is one of my favorite stories in scripture. I think this is what our church should look like. Luke Chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. Some men came carrying a paralytic man on a mat and tried to take him in the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went home and had a snack and said, we did our best. Oh, wait. I'm sure somebody did that, but it wasn't them. What'd they do? They went up to the roof and committed a felony. That's absolutely a true statement. They dug through the man's roof. I've always wondered if after the man was healed, if Jesus also looked up and said, heal thy roof. And the roof just redid like angels came down. I don't, I don't know what happened, but I'm sure if I was the owner of the house and all of a sudden parts of the roof started falling in, I would think, what's going on? I thought I had that termite damage covered. They went up on the roof and they lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Now, I don't know if you've seen the movie Hacksaw Ridge. It's a true story in World War II of an island that was a, was a, uh, a place that was they needed. The, our military needed it uh, in order to do operations from there because of the things that were going on. And it was uh, riddled with caves. And out of these caves would, would come the enemy and they would just wipe people out over and over. They would come wave after wave after wave. And in Hacksaw Ridge, this guy named Desmond Doss, one night they attacked and they retreated and he stayed up on the mountain, even though he was a, what they called a conscientious uh, objector, one who said, I will not fight with a gun. And he carried over 75 soldiers by himself off of that ridge down to safety. Now, not only can you watch the movie, you can actually watch This Is Your Life 
from the 50s and see him and some of the people that he saved come and talk to him if you want to follow up to that story. Now, one thing they did not put in the movie because the producer thought it was too far-fetched was he, he was wounded and they started to cart him off on a stretcher. And as they did that, he saw someone else injured. He rolled off the stretcher, brought aid to that person. A sniper then shot him in the shoulder and they had to pick him up again and take him out. Even the bravest person in here needs help sometimes. See, one of the things you might not have known is, is actually uh, here in Brevard County, Don Bryant, who was the first full-time radiologist that stayed around here, was also on that same island years ago. And as he, it was a, about a month before Dawes was there, and as he walked around and they were doing what they were doing, a Somebody came out of a cave and threw a grenade. He died, but the grenade shrap metal hit him in the arm, and he had to be taken and rescued and taken and healed and surgery and all those other things. His arm is still not totally healed. He lives here in Brevard. I talked to him this week, and then I imagine that he was the first radiologist here. How many people did he save? See... Here's the thing about you and about me is we sometimes don't want to need help, but everybody sometimes needs help. And the truth is, when you're at the point that you don't need help, well, somebody else needs help and you need to go out of your way to help someone else. And maybe it's even physically. I'm going to give you some physical ways to do that. Listen to Matthew 10, 42. If anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. I've been on so many mission trips, and, and when you go on a mission trip, especially in country, it happens every time you plan the mission trip, and you say, we're going to do A when we get there. And so in my expertise, you know, I'm going to teach, or I'm going to do VBS, or I'm going to do something where I'm using what I feel like are my best gifts. And every time you show up and they go, we don't need you to do that. And you go, oh, what do you need me to do? We need you to pull weeds. And if you're not careful, you can get an attitude, well, pulling weeds is beneath me. But then you think of this verse, if you give a cup of cold water in my name. Sometimes the very thing you do seems like such a little thing that you think, well, this might not even be something up to my standards of what I can do. You know, I can do a lot more than this. And Jesus says, no, no, you're, you're in the cold water business right now. Because nobody notices a cup of cold water. Nobody pays a lot of attention to a cup of cold water except for God who does. See, in our world today, one of the things you can do, for example, let me give you some examples of helping somebody physically. Sometimes it's helping them out the door. If you see somebody who's handicapped, you open the door for them. You take care of them. Maybe you, you just help them to their car. Maybe you put their wheelchair in the trunk. Maybe, just maybe, you have Amazon Prime and you ship them some Robitussin. You, you see how it works? You're helping them physically. Now here's some unloving and loving habits. I'm going to do these quickly today, but you can look at them later. Not connecting, rejecting the hurting, not serving others and serving selfishly. Loving habits, connecting with others. By the way, you're going to see not connecting and connecting in every one of these. Because if you don't have at least one person in your life that you are in a relationship with enough that you can help them, then you're not in a relationship and that is not very loving. Because if you want to love people, you got to get close enough to them to hurt you. Did you hear me? You got to get close enough to them that when they shut the hood and break your car, you go, oh no. Connecting with others, helping the hurting, sharing weakness. And then powerful prayers. Let's look at number two, meeting emotional needs. And we're going to look at this story that a lot of people love, but a lot of people have never heard. It's in the book of Ruth, and it's the story of this lady, Naomi. And Naomi, uh, her husband, uh, who has a really cool name, Elimelech, which if you, if you say it over and over, it, it goes like this. Elimelech, 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 in the jungle. Okay, so Naomi, I'm sorry, that's what ADD does to you when you're reading the Bible, which is really bad. Just ruins quiet times all the time, right? You gave this to me. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So, so, so Naomi's husband 
what happens? So they move from Bethlehem. Gosh, Bethlehem, that seems like this famous place. Somebody important was born there. Anyway, they move from Bethlehem, and then they move over to Moab. So that's like a foreign country with foreign gods because they didn't want to starve to death. And then her two sons die and leave the daughter-in-laws. And so she says to her daughter-in-laws, hey, listen, there's, there's no reason to be with me anymore. You need to take care of yourself. Go and find a good man. And uh, uh, seven brides for seven brothers all over again, except it's two. And, and so here's the thing. At this, Ruth chapter 1, 14 through 17, at this, they wept aloud again. Then Orpah, time out, time out. There's this famous lady who has this name. Um, her aunt couldn't say it right, so she actually changed it. And you've probably heard of her. She has her own magazine and show. Uh, this is actually her name, Orpah, which I wouldn't name a kid this because of what happens next. But hey, hey, whatever. All right, so here we go. So then Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. <laughs> See ya. Then Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people, not only to her people, but listen, this is important, but to her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, now listen to this reply, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Now listen, listen, this is a, a salvation right here, listen. And your God my God. Basically, I am surrendering to the God of the Jews, is what she's saying there. This is, a, this is a point of salvation, and it continues, where you die, I will die, and there I'll be buried. May the Lord deal with me be it ever so ver severely if even death separates you and me. She said, hey, even in heaven, we're going to be together. E even, I I'm not leaving you no matter what. Is there anybody you're walking next to like that? You're like, well, nobody's walking next to me like that. Well, maybe you need to be the Ruth. You know, we all want to be the Naomi. Hey, you come tell me what you're doing for me. When have you gone out of your way emotionally for people? One of the things I love, and this has happened over and over, is how many families at our church um, I do the funeral for their parents and their grandparents, and so many of them have taken care of their parents as they get weaker and weaker, and they're, they're, you know, they go from, from getting around easily and driving to then now they're driving them around, and then the next thing is they're using a cane, and then the next thing is they're using a walker, and then the next thing is they're pushing them around in a wheelchair, and then one day even the wheelchair is not enough. And they do their best to take care of their parents. And even if their parents, in some cases, have to go to a, a home that, because of a memory loss or some other issue that's major, they continue to, to visit and sit with them and take care of them. Have you been there for people emotionally? I also love that we have a group in our church that does cards to seniors that they don't even know. In, in nursing homes and other places, they say they just did some for Valentine's Day. And here's what's wild is we didn't even get to announce it in church because they had already finished before we ever even got to tell anybody we needed cards. They had so many cards already done. Why? They're reaching out emotionally to people going, hey, somebody cares about you and you matter. Have you done that lately for somebody who needs a jump start? Somebody who you know has gone through a hard time. Maybe they've lost a loved one. A brother, a sister, a relative, maybe a spouse. And just say, hey, are you doing okay? Or just a note to say, hey, I was thinking about you today. Just want you to know. In Ephesians 4, it tells us how we can be there for people. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Now, this word for unwholesome here means bad fruit. Don't let bad fruit come out of your mouth. What does that mean? It means the words you say grow and have consequences. Some of us can remember words that were said to us that hurt us that we still can remember. Why? Because it was a fruit, and when it was planted, it had consequences. And then it continues, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. That it may benefit. This word for benefit means it may give grace to those who listen. And then a few verses later... Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as in Christ God forgave you. How much did God forgive you? My grandfather had this on, a, on his wall, and it said this much. How much did he forgive you? This much, right? And so forgiving other people. And I just want to remind you, forgiveness and trust, two different things. But you have to forgive. 
Maybe this week you go out of your way to look for a way to send an encouraging note or an encouraging text. Maybe this week you don't say that thing you want to say that you know is true, but it's not good fruit. You say, you know what, I could say that, and I'd be absolutely correct, but I would not say it in love. Let me look at unloving and loving habits. Not connecting. Fair weather friends. You're there when you need them, but you're not there when they need you. All of us have friends like that too, right? Everybody's, everybody's been there. You can look back. As soon as I said that, some of you were like, yeah, I don't know. Hurtful words, unforgiving. And then what is co- loving habits? Connecting with others. Persevering in trials. Encouraging words and forgiving. Why? Because if you get to know people, can I tell you something? You'll get to know them and you'll be like, oh no. At some point when you get to know people, they will say or do something that you will go, wow, I never knew they were broken. It's almost they're like they're like me, right? So you realize that. Number three, by meeting spiritual needs. Now, we were driving to church last night, and I looked over, and there were some baby cows uh, 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 frolicking. There were three baby cows. And it was cool. I don't normally see baby cows together, but these three baby cows, I don't know if they were having a conversation about, like, what are we doing here? Or, or man, where did mom go? You know, I'm not sure what they were having, right? And so they were frolicking in the field, and then right next to them was a donkey. Did you know that you can rent donkeys to cow farmers? I don't know what cow farmers are called. To cow farmers, right? You can rent donkeys. Why would you do that? Because, because wolves and coyotes love baby cows. They love them. They're delicious. But donkeys don't love wolves or coyotes. So let me give you the, the levels of attack of a donkey. Now, I have a point, so hang in with me. First, they'll bray. (laughs) I don't know what noise they make. I can't do a donkey. (laughs) You know, it's as close as I can do. I did see Pinocchio. That's the only one I know, right? (laughs) Right? They bray at them. Sometimes that scares them off. But if that doesn't scare them off, you know what they do? They rush towards them. If that doesn't scare them off, you ready? They will stomp them with their feet. If that wolf still is hanging out, the donkey will grab it by its neck and swing it around until it's dead. Four levels of attack. Listen, if you want to spiritually be there for people, you need some donkey prayers. You need to understand that any of your friends who are doing something for God are under attack by wolves in some way. And those wolves are trying to eat them alive. And so one of the things you can do is you can start praying. <laughs> and maybe more than that, you start to write your prayers out and claim verses. Maybe you then get on your knees and say, God. Maybe then you fast and pray for your friend and say, God, I don't know what to do, but you do. What level of donkey prayer do you need? I don't know, but let's God show you what's going on. Here's what Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he prayed for us too. But listen to what he says here. I pray for them. I'm not praying for all the world, but for those you've given me, for they're yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and the glory that has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they're still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you've given me, so they may be one as you are one. Jesus says, would you protect them? God, would you take care of them? When's the last time you prayed protection for one of your friends who's struggling? Because the truth is, even if it's an emotional battle that they're dealing with, even if it's a physical battle they're dealing with, it's also a spiritual battle. You are not human Tupperware. Physical, spiritual, and emotional are not three separate things in your refrigerator. It's like an open onion in your refrigerator, right? You leave an open onion in your refrigerator, let me tell you, it's going to affect everything. You're going to have milk that tastes like onion. It's awesome. Don't leave an open onion in your fridge. But the truth is, if your friend is struggling emotionally, they're also struggling spiritually. If your friend is struggling physically, they're also struggling spiritually. So pray for them. In James 5, it tells us how to be good friends with each other and how to really connect with people. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful 
and effective. Listen, we need emotional and spiritual healing even more than physical healing. We need people to connect with. And so here's what I'd say. If you're not in a small group, if you're not in a team, find someone who's a Christian who you can do these things with, who you can say, I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. This is, this is where I'm really hurting. You know, we think of confession as, as standing up in the middle of the church and going, let me tell you all my sins. But many times it's just being humble enough to go, this is what I'm dealing with right now. And letting them pray for you. Why? Because when you confess those things to one another, what happens? The Bible says you're healed. What does that mean? Why? Because we go back to that first thing. They start to carry you. You know what they're doing for you? Jumpstart. Let me go through this last set here. Not connecting, no prayers for others, no sharing with others, powerless prayers, loving habits, connecting, praying for others, sharing weaknesses, and powerful prayers. How can you have powerful prayers? You have to know what people need you to pray for them. You have to know them enough to go, man, I know how to lift them up. I know what to pray. I'm going to ask God to show me some verses. Maybe you text them a verse for the day. Hey, God, put this on my heart. I just want you to know. Who do you know that needs a jump start? I would say if you don't know anybody who needs a jump start, it's time for you to get a little closer to some people. Because there's a lot of people that need jump starts today. And maybe right now you're in a good place and you don't need that. Your car's running fine. And maybe in the past you jump-started somebody and they broke your hood. But God never says, don't do it if you go through pain. You do what I've called you to do out of love. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. That's the first step to allowing his love to flow into you, give you a brand new battery, let you help others. And if you're here today and you're hurting and you're a Christian, you've been a Christian a long time, I want to encourage you today to allow his love to flow into you and then go out of your way to bless other people. One thing I've noticed is when people give other people jump starts, God improves their battery. Because when you start helping others, God gives you the ability to help even more people. If you've never given your life to Christ, I'd love to talk to you today about what it means to surrender your life to him. Jesus came and died for you and for me because God loves us so much that the Bible says he died for us. Why? So that we could have a relationship with them. How? Through faith. Trusting that Jesus died and rose again and we say, God, I surrender my sin to your righteousness. I want to follow you. If you want to do that today, I'd love to talk to you after church about what that means. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for all the folks in my life over the years who've given me jump starts. Folks who've come alongside of me, who've prayed for me, who's encouraged me in the hardest times of my life. Father, I pray that you in our church would give so many people the power that only comes from you to jumpstart other people. Lord, may we walk in your presence and in your power. Father, may we not do this in our own strength, but only in your strength would we help others spiritually, physically, emotionally, any way you want us to help them. Lord, for that one who's hurting this morning, I pray just from being here that you, right now, would fire them up for you. Lord, that you'd renew in them a clean heart. That their steadfastness would be renewed. We thank you for this time today. In Jesus' name, amen.